When was the last time you did a backup of your Home Assistant instance? Well, today I'm going to show you three different ways you can do that. One manual and two automated. I'm going to use this page as a reference. These are common tasks that you can do within Home Assistant. And uh, at the bottom of that is your backups. And it talks about different ways to create snapshots. Home Assistant has a way that you can make snapshots easy and it backs up everything that you want to back up. And so let's start with the first one. And that's going to be manual. So if you go to Supervisor and you click on Snapshots, you'll see I have some already in here. But all you have to do to take a snapshot is give it a name. And I, I usually will put the date. So let's say 2020 and today is November 4th, 1104. And typically the time would be, um, you know, whatever time it is, 0500 or whatever. And then when you save it, I'll do a full, snap, a full snapshot most every time. You can do a partial snapshot. And this is where cons a size consideration comes into play. If you're going to back this up to say uh, an offline storage device, uh, offline storage cloud service or whatever, you need to make sure you have enough space and your retention policies are set so that you don't run out of space when doing these backups. You can limit what gets backed up by going through here and doing a partial backup and only backing up things that you really want to back up. Uh, looking at my list here, um, I pretty much want everything. I mean, maybe not the media file. Um, but looking through everything else, I pretty much want to keep all of that. Uh, you can also add um, password protection. And I recommend this if you're going to store this offsite, throw in a password so that um, someone gets a hold of that cloud service or the snapshot. They don't have all your information. I know we all store a lot of secrets, a lot of configuration options. And so we have passwords and keys and things in our, in our configuration. You probably want to password protect that. All right, so that is the first way to do it. The second way you can do that is to go to um, Samba or an SMB backup. For this, we're gonna click on the link for Samba backup because we're gonna need a couple pieces of information. And I'm backing this up to my Synology NAS that has a Samba share installed on it or running on it. Uh, you're, you can back this up to any PC that's running Samba or any device that's running Samba on your local network. Um, here's an add-on that was created by um, Thomas Muir, and I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Sorry about it, Thomas. And all you do here is uh, you need to add the repository. So we're going to need this link right here. Not all repositories are automatically included in Home Assistant. You have to add extra ones if you want to do things like um, this where they're outside of the, the core repository. So we'll go to supervisor, we'll click on add on store. And then over here, the three dots, we'll see repositories. And we're going to add this one for Thomas Muir. And now we see we have Tom's home assistant add ons. So when we go to the add on store and search right away, we're going to be able to search for and we'll go back here and look. Uh, we want to search for Samba Backup. So let's find Samba Backup or Samba. And you can see here it is right there. So before you start, uh, well, let's install it first. And then you'll have to do some configuration. And in the configuration tab, before you start it, you need to make sure you have all of all this set up. So we're going to need a host. So let's go with um, my local uh, machine here. And my share, my target directory will be, um, and these have to exist. It doesn't create these things. You have to create them. Snapshot or snapshots. And then my username and password, which is what I'll use for um, logging into that share. It, you can do anonymous or guest uh, Samba, but you have to make sure that your share or your device is set up to handle that. I require authentication, so I'm going to set mine up this way. And in this setting here, keep local, keep remote. <clears throat> this is how many times you want to, or how many copies of the um, 
the the snapshots you want to keep this is a lot of dependency on space savings or space you have to put this on uh, I don't think I need to keep all of them so for remote let's say I want to keep the last five and for local um, I will probably set this down to two or three um, what happens is if your home assistant crashes and you can't get to the local ones, it doesn't matter anyway. So remote's really the most important, uh, keeping one or two on your local helps it to, um, not destroy those. If for some reason the backup didn't work right and you go look at it and you don't have any backups and, and then you can do trigger time. This is what time the backups actually run trigger days, um, will be all these days that you want it to run. And the, you can exclude add-ons and you, you can exclude folders, much like I showed you in the manual, uh, the manual way of doing it. You can exclude those here. So you're not backing up large chunks of things like the Plex metadata folder, for example, if you're running the Plex add-on, you may not want to back that up because it's full of uh, extra data. And then uh, any folders you want to back or exclude. All right, now we'll save it. Go back to info, start. Check the logs. All right, here's our configuration information. We wait a minute or two to make sure it's making the connection. And after you've sat here for a couple minutes and you don't get any more output, that means there aren't any errors and you're good to go. Now what we can do is we can come back to configuration and we can set the time closer to what time it is. So if I wanted to run at maybe that time, except it doesn't like that time. All right, I've saved it. I'll go back to info and restart. Check my logs. And in 15 seconds, if all goes well, we should actually have a, sh a backup running. And now you can see that the backup is running and it's creating the snapshot. When it's finished with this, and because I backed up everything, it will take a little bit of time. It will actually put that back up into my Samba share or Samba share on my NAS. That's the second way that we can do an automated backup. The third way that I'm going to show you today is using um, Google Drive. And again, make sure that you understand how much space you have available to you so that you don't overwrite or you don't run out of space doing these backups. And for Google Drive backup, we have a similar situation or similar setup where we're going to go here and we're going to add a repository. So if we go down here and find the repository that we need to add, it's going to be this right here. So I'm going to copy this one. Go back to my add-on store repository. Paste that in here as a new repository. And then I can search for, close it, and then I can search for Google Drive Backup. This one's a little bit more, um, more UI based. You're going to see a lot of things that you're going to do within the user interface on this one. So I'm going to install this. Start on boot. Um, and then all these things that you typically would set, you can actually show this in the sidebar because it has um, ingress, which means that you can click on the web UI from the, from the sidebar. So I look over here and I should have, um, once I started, I guess, now here it is, snapshots. So I click over here and I have snapshots on my sidebar. All right, so um, let me go find it now in here. Here it is. All right, so before we start it, we have to configure it as well. And these are the things that you want to configure. Max snapshots in Hasio four. That's how many stay local, how many go in the Google Drive. And for this, I would say probably four is fine. Days between snapshots. This is dependent on how much change you make. You may want to run this daily. You may want to run this every three days. And then I'm going to leave SSL false for now. And once I do all of that, I can start this up check my logs to make sure everything looks good. All right. All right. So a refresh does show that it's running. You can open the web UI from here, or you can come over here to snapshots 
I'll just do it from here. And so this takes you through an authentication mechanism that you use with Google Drive. So the first backup creates a new folder in the root of your drive, and this is where future backups will be stored. So it says, I have four snapshots already. Once I authenticate with Google, the four newest snapshots will be backed up. And then you can change your settings to alter the add-ons behavior um, if this isn't what you want. So since I'm running a backup already, I'm going to see if I can just not do this at the moment. But you can say snapshots in Home Assistant 4, days between, snapshots in Google Drive 4, um, and then snapshot time of the day. Uh, I'm going to put this at about, um, let's put it at 9 o'clock. This is not typically when I'd run it. I'd run it overnight when things are not happening. Um, but for the sake of the demonstration, we'll do it at 9 o'clock so it doesn't try to back up while my other one's running. And by the way, for this demonstration, I am running multiple backups to demonstrate it for you, but I would never do this in production. All right, so authenticate with Google Drive. And it's going to tell you to pick an account to use. And I'll use my account that I use for my main Google. Does not work with um, Google um, domains or whatever that is. Um, it has to be just a straight Google account. So I'm going to allow it to manage Google Drive and folders. And yes, I'm allowing it to back it up. And now we're almost set. So I've authorized the add-on to connect to Google Drive and I've created the authorization string below. So we can try to send the credentials back to the add-on, but um, it might return an error. If it does, we're just going to copy it. So I'm going to copy it anyway, and I'm going to paste it into one of my notepad things here, just so I have it available. Interesting. All the spaces are in there. Let me try copying it direct without that. Cause I don't really want all those spaces in there. All right, let's paste it back in here on a new line Come back over here. All right, there it is pasted without bunch of spaces. All right, so I'm gonna try to send it. We'll see what happens. And now it's telling me unauthorized. So it says if I get an error, um, I'm gonna copy the authorization string and paste it to the add on where I click to authenticate with Google Drive button that brought me here. So I'm gonna paste it right here. And I'm gonna save it. All right, so now what I have is I have four different backups here. Uh, well, I have 9.7 gig worth of um, backup space or backups in Home Assistant. I have zero on Google Drive. My last snapshot was seven hours ago. My next snapshot is one hour from now, give or take. So if I look at my drive, here's a folder called Home Assistant Snapshots, which it created. There's nothing here yet, but it's probably doing something. So if you see my drive, if you see Home Assistant snapshots within your drive, that means it has created that already for you. It means it's authenticated. And here we go. So <laughs> it has actually uploaded the demo Samba backup uh, snapshot for me. So it's not creating a new snapshot. It's just uploading what's already in my directory. So going back over here. This one's backed up. It's now uploading these. So actually what it really is doing is it, what it said it was going to do. It's going to take these four snapshots and it's going to upload those to Google Drive. So I'll have about nine gig of um, backup space used on my Google Drive. Now, if we look at Google Drive, just to give you an idea, I don't pay for extra storage on Google Drive since I have a NAS and I only have the base 15 gigabytes. So if I put nearly 10 gig worth of backup files onto a Google Drive, it's going to limit my remaining use to five gig. So again, that's a consideration when you're talking about how much, uh, how many of these you want to send to Google Drive. So um, you, in your settings, you may want to limit this to, let's say two uh, in Google Drive. Um, so it's uh, that's up to you and how you want to do that. But it does. Uh, but first you'll have to unlock your device. Yeah, my phone heard me say, say the G word. 
Um, anyway, so this is basically two different ways to do that. Now, if we go back over here to um, things to do, where I did that, that. all right. So um, if we go back over here, there are other options for, for backing up. There's Dropbox Sync, which I have used in the past. It works well. And then there's Remote Backup. <clears throat> I haven't tried doing anything with this one. Um, this one basically allows you to um, SCP or SSH it to some other device. And so this one you would create um, a configuration YAML and then it would send, you would create a private key so that it could SSH to whatever device and then send it that way. Um, so there are multiple ways to back it up. The final word on this is definitely back it up. Over the course of my time using Home Assistant, I've had to restore twice for something that didn't go the way it was supposed to. Always have a backup, always have a backup. And a final, final, final caveat to this, every once in a while, check to make sure that your backups are running. Because if there's no backup and you assume there is, then you're gonna have a problem. On the Google Drive backup, one of the things he talks about, or the, the author talks about in here, is doing some sort of um, making sure that your backups are running. So you can create a couple of sensors to actually notify you of the status of your last backup. We got uh, manual backup, we've got Samba backup, we've got Google Drive backup. Talked about um, making sure that you do some sort of backup. Uh, make sure that you verify the backups are working every once in a while. And then you have peace of mind knowing that if you're messing with Home Assistant and you blow something up or you do an upgrade and it fails, you've got a, a backup to go to. So with that, I thank you for watching today. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, I've had a lot of activity lately on my Discord server some, for some of my other videos. So jump over there if you have anything. The Discord server is linked down below. And hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. It really helps the channel grow, and we will see you on the next one.